Today we are going to take all of our inequality knowledge and combine it with situations um, outside of the math classroom. So we are going to apply our inequality understanding to um, outside contexts. Um, so there's three different examples that I'm going to go through with you today. The first one is just when we um, have that word problem. So it says Jada is taller than Diego. Diego is 54 inches tall. Write and graph an inequality that compares Jada's height to Diego's height. So we got to look for some keywords. What we're used to is the greater than or the equal to or at most um, or the minimum words. But this time it's a little bit different and we need to think about comparing words. So what words um, are comparing? In this case, we've got this. Taller. So we know that Jada is taller or um, in inequality words, Jada is uh, greater in height than Diego. We know that Diego is 54 inches tall. Um, so what we need to do is compare Jada's height to Diego's height. So we're going to have to have a variable. So because we're going to have a variable, we need to write a let statement. So I'm going to say let J be Jada's height. Now, I know that I want to keep my variable on the left side. So once I write my let statement, I am going to run write my inequality before I, I graph. Um, but the end goal is to have that graph. J. And then I know um, the start to my solution set is 54. Diego's height is 54. And all we know is that J has to be greater than that. So then we go ahead and write our greater than symbol. Jada is greater than 54, Diego's height. Jada is taller than 54 inches. Now I have to determine if I need to put that or equal to. Well, here it says that Jada is taller. So she can't be 54 inches. She has to be more than that. So we leave that greater than symbol. Now I take that and turn it into a graph. I plot my 54. Because Jada cannot be 54 pounds, or excuse me, inches, I leave that circle open. I know that she needs to be taller, so I shade to the right. So when I have a word problem here, I do need to go ahead and uh, determine what words are my comparing words. I'm not always going to see that more than, less than, greater than, maximum word. So I need to kind of figure out which are my comparing words um, and how to how to turn those into a greater than or, um, or inequality sign of any sort. I write my let statement, I write my inequality, and then I get my graph. So once I have all three of those that match, I'm good to go. So that's one example. Another example um, that we see all the time and we don't even know it are street signs or um, all sorts of signs. You look around and when you go out and about, um, there are inequality signs everywhere and we don't even uh, process that that's what they are. So when I see the speed limit sign, speed limit is 55. Now, do I understand that people go over 55 miles per hour? Yes. However, the limit is 55. So I should not go over 55 is what my sign is telling me. So again, I'm going to start off with a let statement. Let D be speed I should go. Again, I do understand that people will go over that, but we're going to talk about what um, what I should be doing per the law, per um, the sign here. I've got D, and then my the start of my solution set is 55. Now, um, I don't want to, I need to determine if I want to be going more than 55 or less than 55. Well, I shouldn't be going over 55. If I go greater than 55, then that is opening up doors for me to get a ticket. Um, so I need to be going less. So my speed should be less than 55. But 
I can go 55. So uh, 55 is an acceptable uh, solution. So D is less than or equal to 55. My sh speed should be less than or equal to 55. So again, I graph. This time I color in my circle because I can go 55. But as soon as I hit that 56, I could technically get a ticket. Then I shade because my to the left because it should be under 55. I've got one more example here, um, and that's actually taking it um, from a graph here and turning it in to a situation. So the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna just work backwards. Up here, I started with my, my situation, broke it down, turned it into an inequality, and then my graph. Now I have my graph, so I wanna go ahead and make next my inequality. So I'm just gonna put a variable in, um, and then my start of my solution set is negative 20, so that's my, my number that I'm starting at. Um, and then I see that it's going to the right, so that means it's greater. And since that circle is colored in, it can be equal to. So um, whatever my situation is, is X is greater than or equal to negative 20. So now I need to determine what my, my situation is. And you should get creative. I mean, there's all sorts of things. Um, they can be true or not. Um, try and make them something that you've heard of or you've seen before um, or something along those lines. Um, so what I'm going to say is the temperature... will be warmer than negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So in that situation, I am told that um, negative 20 is my starting point. Um, now, also, actually, if I say warmer, I might want to say um, warmer or equal to. So I could actually say at least um, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit would actually make a little bit more sense. The temperature will be at least negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That would mean that my X is let X be the temperature. And there you have it. So you got your graph, you turned it into an inequality, you determined a situation, you checked that it made sense. If I kept it out warmer than, then that, that circle couldn't be closed. It would have to be um, open because I, the warmer than would imply that it couldn't be negative 20. This situation now shares with me that it could be at least negative 20 um, degrees Fahrenheit. So it can be negative 20 or it can be warmer. Uh, I make sure I have my let statement. I make sure they all match. And there you have it.